Welcome back to Clean Sky Sunday. We've been telling you the story about U.S. natural gas found in shale formations around the country and how uniquely American technology has allowed producers to tap into that natural gas and change the U.S. energy picture. Well, now we continue our story with a look at how producers around the globe want to tap into that uniquely American technology. We pick up with Professor Gary Lash of SUNY Fredonia. Lash recently hosted geologists from Nexon Corporation looking to develop shale in Colombia and Canada. They want to learn more about shale on all levels to start to develop in, in, uh, in those. In British Columbia is a place that people are looking at now and in areas of Colombia. Do they have a large potential there in Colombia? In some of the younger, yes, they do. They have some real t younger than the Marcellus. But the, the, the geology isn't going to be that different. It's just a younger version of the Marcellus. Reed Detchen of the UN Foundation says companies worldwide are making deals now to take American know-how back home. What we're really seeing is foreign companies coming to the U.S. to find out about our technology. So BP and Stott Oil Hydro have made major investments, for example, in Chesapeake Energy in order to get access to the technology. We've got visitors coming from all over the world to visit our uh, 10 or 12 principal shale formations. Uh, Charles Ebinger of the Brookings Institution farms. says it's because of the potential for shales outside North America for both gas and oil. Well, in addition to the United States and Canada, the, the large shale oil potential looks like it's in uh, Norway, in Russia, possibly in Hungary and Poland. Uh, China looks very large, Australia, Indonesia, India, the Great Lakes region in Eastern Africa. Um, Brazil, Argentina, Chile uh, are certainly uh, the major spots. And I should mention also uh, in the Middle East, Egypt and Saudi Arabia look very promising for shale gas. A recent agreement between the U.S. and China to develop shale gas was sealed by the heads of government. We're seeing a lot of interest in China about the shale potential. China is very concerned about its energy supplies, very concerned about dependence on the Middle East and on other areas for their very fast-growing economy. Detchen agrees there is vast potential worldwide. India is going to take a very keen interest in shale gas development. They are also not well supplied with uh, other resources. And I think certainly in Europe, there's going to be a lot of interest in gas from the energy security perspective. What's the period of time over which will, will th that will turn from promising into reality? Within a decade. Within a decade, we'll see uh, a lot of shale gas uh, in a lot of these countries coming to market. Estimates of just how much shale gas could be tapped outside North America vary widely. But one says it could be the equivalent of more than 200 years' worth of natural gas consumption in the U.S. at current demand levels and could possibly be nearly 700 years' worth. Tony Meggs of MIT warns the science gives little certainty. To find shale, he says, look where there's oil and gas now. So wherever there are conventional deposits of oil and gas, uh, in Russia, in the Middle East, in parts of Europe, other parts of the world, wherever there are conventional supplies, there will be uh, shale gas. Now, some of this will be economic and producible, some of it won't. And until we are able to, uh, until we get around to testing it, uh, it's really too early to tell where the good deposits are going to lie. So the answer is, uh, yes, there's, there's a lot of gas and a lot of uncertainty. Meggs says the best global assessment for unconventional reserves was done in the late 1990s, estimating 35,000 trillion cubic feet of shale gas, tight gas, and coal bed methane. So if that number was right, that would be 300 years worth of unconventional gas at current uh, product, uh, production rates. The prospect has both foreign companies coming to the U.S. and American companies heading overseas. It's happening. Exxon's, Exxon's been looking in Poland and Hungary. Um, Conoco is one of the biggest uh, uh, shell gas drillers right now. They've got interests all over the world. So, uh, uh, and Exxon in Australia, uh, uh, near their Gorgon big LNG field, they now think there may be shale gas there as well. Royal Dutch Shell is involved in Europe as well as a number of uh, European companies. Few would call it a global drilling rush, certainly not of the magnitude that we see here. But experts say if and when developed, global shale could unleash gas resources never thought possible and could change the geopolitics of natural gas. So this could really eventually, I don't know how far into the future, but render Russia powerless in the whole energy picture. 
precisely. Rob Sapani of Caspian Energy Consulting says global shale could dramatically improve Europe's ability to withstand cutoffs of Russian gas, the kind we've seen happen in recent payment disputes with Ukraine. And that's why the Russians are scrambling to tie up long-term market relationships with the Europeans through their various pipeline agreements into Europe, through their pipeline agreements with the Chinese. And so Russia, realizing that American innovation has become a game changer, is also scrambling so that it will not lose its preeminence in the natural gas field. There are considerable imports coming into Europe from various places, particularly from Algeria, uh, from Russia, uh, and actually a lot of gas uh, coming from Norway, which of course is part of Europe. But the over, overall, there's a net very substantial import. So um, in, in, in indigenous supplies from, let's say, Eastern Europe and France and other places uh, have the potential to uh, uh, reduce the amount of uh, imports from, from other countries. But Russia could gain as well. well. If Russia has as much gas, uh, shale gas, as, a, as we know they have in conventional gas, I think it means that Russia is going to be, have the potential to be, continue to be a major supplier uh, to Western Europe and possibly even a much bigger LNG exporter to the world market. So from Russia's perspective, I think this is very good, uh, very good news uh, from their security standpoint. Some say Russia's uh, shale and, and natural gas, conventional natural gas um, supplies mean that it will continue to hold the same place geopolitically. Do you agree? Well, I think that nobody can be dominant if there's abundant supply. In addition to the geopolitical changes, experts see environmental gains. The real benefit, you know, of more gas in the world is that uh, it, it helps uh, uh, to spread out the um, energy usage across different sources. And also, most importantly, you know, gas is uh, considerably cleaner than coal in particular. So gas displacing coal in the energy system uh, in terms of CO2 uh, uh, output is a very good thing. But the new technology brings new environmental concerns. The millions of gallons of water used to frack each well, an estimated 800,000 gallons returned to the surface tainted with chemicals that could include lead, mercury, and formaldehyde. There are important environmental questions that need to be addressed. You're going to be drilling a lot of holes in the ground. You're going to have to deal with a lot of wastewater that is not uh, very easy to dispose of. And in some places, surely the, uh, the, the availability of water will be a constraint. Still, experts say it will take decades to develop shale globally, and most shale gas will remain in the ground simply because there's so much conventional gas there that's cheaper to get out. Elliot Gu of uh, the Energy Strategist says price is one shale. key I mean, to shale's to have, future. In order to develop the kind of um, domestic capacity uh, to, to, uh, to drill for shale that we have in the U.S., the domestic know-how in a lot of these countries, you're going to have to see gas prices be a lot higher than they are today. Right now, at current natural gas prices, you know, who's going to go into a place like Pakistan and develop you know, natural gas reserves when you know, prices in, around the world are so low? You also have a lot of LNG uh, capacity coming on stream, uh, liquefaction capacity, export capacity, coming on stream over the next 18 to 24 months. Um, you know, a lot of these countries have major LNG import capacity. But with climate legislation working its way through Congress and a global treaty near completion, natural gas may have a bigger role in the global energy future. There is great opportunity to increase the use of natural gas over the next few years, uh, where it offsets, frankly, uh, you know, old and inefficient coal-fired coal power stations. That's a very quick win in terms of CO2 uh, reduction. I think that's a great opportunity. But it mustn't be the only thing we do. We need to continue to develop carbon capture and storage, continue to develop wind, etc., etc. So it's a balanced portfolio of, of activities. But be, uh, it is certainly the case that an extra amount of gas, this great sort of resource that has been recently dis discovered and developed, uh, buys a little time, creates more options. Uh, and it's something that can be done rel used relatively quickly. Other like experts agree. I think it's certainly the game changer of the 21st century. And it would be the best thing that could happen to the United States in terms of energy independence. Whenever these talks do reach uh, an agreement, a formal treaty, you do see gas as a winner? Gas will be a winner, absolutely.
An MIT report on natural gas released over the summer predicts that natural gas will provide an increasing share of U.S. energy needs over the next several decades, increasing its share of the energy market to 40 percent from 20 right now, with shale a big part of that reason. Longer term, though, it does predict a dimmer future for natural gas if greenhouse gas regulations cut the CO2 that's allowed into the atmosphere. That is a goal of the White House.